Hello everybody and welcome to my December 2021 reading wrap up. So I just have the one book to uh, wrap up for you today. Dane reads. And that is Prelude to Dune, House Arconum by uh, Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. Big old chunky boy, about 630 odd pages. Um, but the print isn't too bad. And um, as you'll remember from last uh, month's wrap up, I really enjoyed House Atreides. I also really enjoyed House Harkonnen. This is a four out of five for me. Um, there's just something about these preludes that I really enjoy. I think, um, I mean, I've read Kevin J. Anderson's Star Wars novelizations before. Uh, Brian Herbert apparently has done all right for himself as a sci-fi writer as well. I think um, Frank Herbert's Dune books are much more like hard sci-fi, whereas these feel much more like space opera. So they're a lot more readable. Um, they're very plot driven, very character driven and it was just cool to see a lot of the characters that are in the like original Dune series but when they were younger so we've got some more Leto Atreides here uh, we have Vladimir Harkonnen um, kind of becoming the fat bastard that he became <laughs> um, and like uh, Duncan Idaho is in this and it was before he became got brought back as a goaler so it's the original Duncan Idaho Gurney Halleck's in this and we get to see his origin story so um, yeah just a lot of really cool stuff there's also um, uh, another Atreides child, uh, the son the Duke had before Paul, and that kind of leads into why Paul was a boy even though he was supposed to be a girl. Um, yeah, there's just lots of really good stuff here, did enjoy, uh, full review coming soon, but yeah, if you're a Dune fan and you've read the original six books and enjoyed them, um, don't be put off by all the naysayers about the Brian Herbert books, at least for this, the first two that I've read. Um, both have been fantastic. Hello everybody, just the one book to wrap up for you today. I'm sorry, my computer's just restarted itself for no apparent reason, so I'm trying to reconnect to my Wi-Fi as I speak to you. Uh, I read Timeline by Michael Crichton, so I actually picked this up at Morrison's. They have a, a book exchange there where it's all for charity, and I've been slowly working my way through the Michael Crichton books. This one's a bit weird because it's sci-fi, but it's also historical fiction, kind of in the same book. Um, basically, it's all to do with the like many parallel universes theory, and um, basically a sort of a time machine's created and some people are sent back in time. I will say, I lost interest a little bit when they actually went back in time, so all the sci-fi stuff was great. And um, I enjoyed, like, there was this, like, research team doing a dig and whatnot and trying to understand a bit more about this historical site. And then they all get sent back in time to it. And at that point, I did lose a bit of interest, even though that's when all the action really starts happening. Um, I think it's because that then it became very much more about the plot rather than about the ideas, and it was the ideas that I found the most interesting. Um, I would still give it a 3.5 out of 5, though. It was well written. The only other thing I would say is it did get a bit annoying because it was kind of written in the way they would have spoken. So they were all going, forsooth, methinks not and all this stuff and it was like oh i don't want just i would have rather it had just been because they had these like ear translation pieces anyway that were translating it into modern english for them so it's like they could have just just heard it like normal english but i mean i guess it it depends for some people that would add to the sense of the time and place for me it did the opposite and kept pulling me out of the book because it was just kind of annoying but um yeah still 3.5 out of 5 it was all right not Crichton's best but um definitely one that makes you think, especially the first third of it. So make of that as you will. Guten Tag! Ich habe nur ein Buch to talk about. This is uh, Etoile's One. I don't know why I'm speaking in German, because this is French. Uh, by Gillian Taylor and David Edwards. It could be Gillian, I don't know if it's... So this is actually like a French study guide. There is a lot of French in there to practice as well. Kind of more basic stuff. Uh, it's designed for high schoolers who are learning French and it's part of a wider program, the Etoile program by uh, BBC. Um, so this came as part of a big job lot of books I got. There was also like a folder and some other bits. There was originally a cassette tape which um, it didn't come with. So this actually references the cassette tape a few times and obviously I couldn't do those activities. But we have things like cartoon strips, bon dessinée, um, and yeah, it was quite enjoyable really. I'd probably give it, I don't know, a strong 3 out of 5 I think, because again I was missing a few bits with the tape, and also I would have preferred it if it was just a graphic novel all the way through, uh, and Charlie is actually sending me two of those in the post, so shout out to Charlie Heathcote. But uh, yeah, I read this as a bedtime book to continue my French practice, did enjoy.
There you go. Yo, I have just two books to wrap up for you today. The first of which is The Beast from the East by R.L. Stein. So I picked this up from a charity shop. That's just my cat jumping past. Picked this up from a charity shop because it's one of the Goosebumps books that I hadn't read. You can see that I tabbed two things. Uh, one of them was that, what did she, what happened? She did something with a, an adjective, I believe. Oh no, my mouth suddenly felt so dry and I'm there being like, so dry that what? Um, and the other thing was that it starts out with her saying when she was a kid her mum used to say don't let the bed bugs bite when she went to bed um, Which my mum used to do as well um, But there just wasn't much to say about this one. It basically just followed like a game of TIG in a forest uh, or it as Americans call it and um, Yeah, basically there are these monsters knocking around and uh, these kids have to play a game of it um, To try and survive attacks from these monsters and to not be eaten but um, I don't know, it was all right. I wasn't particularly taken with it. I would give it a three out of five. And then I read The Emerald City of Oz by L. Frank Baum. So this is the latest in the series of buddy reads of the Oz series that I have been doing with Joel Swagman. Um, I didn't enjoy the last one so much, but this one uh, felt a lot better. I mean, it did again kind of have that vibe of it. it's just like Baum just basically taking people along on a journey to reintroduce all of his old characters. But um, Dorothy's aunt and uncle go to Oz as well. I was just seeing if their names are here. I think it was Uncle M. Uh, sorry, Aunt M, I want to say. And Uncle Summon. Yeah, it is Aunt M. And Uncle Henry. Um, so that was nice to see them in Oz and to sort of see see them as adults knocking around. Um, overall, pretty good book. Full review coming soon. 3.5 out of 5, but a strong one. And I'm glad to say I feel as though we're back on track with the Oz books. And they've... I was a bit worried they'd uh, jump the shark, but we might still have some good stuff coming. We'll see. Hello, everybody. It is me. I have some books to wrap up that I've just dropped on the floor. So, let's start with this one. This is Le Bouclier Averne by Argosini et Adesso. Uh, c'est une bande dessinée en français. Uh, en anglais, c'est un graphic novel. Um, numéro 11 dans la série. Something like that. I'm not really sure what number it is, to be honest, by this point. Um, with this one, I actually found <laughs> that it was a lot harder than a lot of the other Asterix books, Asterix books that I've read. Like, I could just about follow the story. But normally it's like, I'm literally absorbed in the story, you know? Whereas with this one, it was like, I'm just, just about hanging on there enough to know what's going on. Um, so I didn't really get absorbed in the story because I was so busy just trying to translate the words. Um, I'm not sure why that is. It might just be that I was having like a couple of off days when I when I picked this one up. But I am still enjoying reading Asterix. Um, I am feeling like I need a break though, uh, which is good because apparently Charlie, Charles Heathcote here on Booktube is going to be sending me a couple of uh, French books that he got at his uh, charity shop. So if I can switch over to those, my next couple of French reads won't be Asterix and then that will just give me some time to, you know, get back in the zone for when I pick up the next one, which I guess is... Asterix au Jeux Olympique, which will be him at the Olympic Games. But yeah, I gave this one a 3 out of 5. It was just alright. Then I read a couple of Roald, Roald Dahl books. So the first one is My Uncle Oswald. Um, this is very much for adults. It's uh, erotic at times. The plot basically centres around this guy who finds a way to turn like beetles into like super potent Viagra, essentially. Um, and then he uses this to then go and basically get sperm samples from famous people like H.G. Wells and whatnot um, to create this like big sperm bank of famous people's sperm that he can then sell to rich women uh, after they die. That's basically the plot of this story. I give it a 4 out of 5, it's very funny. Very not safe for work, very not safe for kids. And um, there are a few bits in it which are a bit uh, problematic, um, but I mean it was funny, so it's alright. Then we have the wonderful story of Henry Sugar. So this is a short story collection, a bunch of different stories in them, in this, and uh, some non-fiction in there as well. The title story is about a guy who, using yoga and stuff, basically, is able to learn to see through cards and to see what's on the other side. And so because of that, he goes into starts going to casinos and stuff and winning loads of money from blackjack. And originally he just wanted to make himself rich, but he decides instead of just doing that, he's going to be selfless and use his money to set up some orphanages. So that was pretty cool probably a 3.5 out of 5 I didn't tap I tabbed out like two things um, yeah two things so it's not enough there for me to do a full review but I did enjoy it uh, so as I say 3.5 out of 5 
Then we have Seneca Letters from a Stoic. So I was expecting this to be a bedtime read, but as you can see from all the tabs, I really enjoyed it. Um, it is literally a collection of letters that he wrote, but it's kind of thought that he wrote these letters intending for them to be preser preserved for posterity rather than just like, you know, when you read the letters of Allen Ginsberg, it's just him writing to Kerouac shooting the shit, whereas this is like profound stuff. Um, it is kind of contradictory in some ways though, because he talks about how you shouldn't um, like look to the words of other people to get your own wisdom and he supports this by quoting loads of well-known philosophers um, but yeah there's like stuff all over the place in this that I tabbed out that I thought was interesting um, very much like a thinky book but it's great for if you want something that's going to give you some food for thought and then I read Beyond Good and Evil by Friedrich Nietzsche so Nietzsche is one of those authors that people always tell me that I would enjoy um, I thought it was okay, there was definitely less stuff in this that appealed to me than the book of uh, Seneca's Letters. Um, it was kind of one of those, I, I sort of likened it as, it's like going to a car boot sale or something like that and you have to root through all the crap to find these occasional bits of gold. Um, and that was very much what it was, I mean I still tabbed out a decent amount and there's some good like aphorisms and stuff. But also a lot of the time it's just him waffling on and you're just like, oh, okay I'll keep reading. So I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5. And I can't remember if I told you about Seneca, but that was a 4 out of 5. Uh, reviews of both of them coming soon anyway, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Okay, wrap up time. I have a whole bunch of books to talk to you about. So, we've got uh, Journeys to the Other Side of the World by David Attenborough. This is a 4 out of 5. Um, it's actually um, three a bind-up of three books that he wrote when he was younger, I think in the 1960s. Um, so it contains Quest in Paradise, which I'd already read, 4 out of 5. Zoo Quest to Madagascar, another 4 out of 5, and Quest under Capricorn, another 4 out of 5. You can see a theme here, can't you? So, um, uh, Quest in Paradise, he goes off to Fiji and a couple of other places. Zoo Quest to Madagascar, obviously to Madagascar, and then Quest under Capricorn, he goes to Australia. He used to be paid by London Zoo to basically, he'd go and document the wildlife, but they'd also bring specimens back for the zoo, which I don't necessarily agree with. I mean, as you know, it was a different time as well. Um, but in Quest Under Capricorn, he's much more just sort of, I guess, going to get a feel for Australia. And, um, you know, it's much more about the people he meets rather than uh, the individual animals that he sees along the way. Um, but yes, as I say, did enjoy this one. Then I read Collected Short Stories by Roald Dahl. So these aren't actually all of the collected short stories. Um, it's actually just a bind up of five books. So, and three of them I'd already read. So Kiss Kiss. Um, again, this is another 4 out of 5 for all of these collections and for the book as a whole. Um, Dahl is just a fantastic short story writer. So we have Kiss Kiss, which starts off with a great story about like a landlady of uh, like a boarding house who is basically practicing human taxidermy on the visitors she gets. We have Over To You, Switch Bitch and Someone Like You. So those three are ones I read sort of way back when. And then Eight Further Tales of the Unexpected, which is basically like The Twilight Zone, but in short story form and written by Roald Dahl. Um, so yeah, definitely you do recommend this one if you want to get your hands on some Roald Dahl short stories. I mean, I, as I say, I'd already read some of the individual collections. So um, yeah, there were some good ones in it still. So do recommend. Okay, then what have we got over here? Um, now we have a mound of Mr. Men books. So these, they're all just 3.5 out of 5. I'm basically reading these. I want to read all of the Mr. Men and Little Miss books because um, they were just a part of my childhood, you know. So the ones that I haven't read are going on my uh, wish list. But yes, I bought I bought a job lot on eBay and won a bunch of them. So we got all these to go through. So um, all by Roger Hargreaves, all 3.5 out of 5. Mr. Sneeze, Mr. Greedy, Mr. Small, Mr. Daydream, Mr. Nosy, Mr. Chatterbox, Mr. Fussy, Mr. Strong, Mr. Quiet, Mr. Busy, Mr. Bounce, Mr. Funny, Mr. Skinny, Mr. Wrong, Mr. Impossible, Mr. Lazy, Mr. Jelly, Mr. Muddle, Mr. Tall and Mr. Nonsense. So I don't know how far I am off now of completing the whole uh, series, but I can't be that far off, especially for the Mr. Men. Little Miss, I have a lot further to go. Um, but yeah, very pleasurable. Nice to read those. Uh, then we have The Last Keeper by J.B. Hilliard. So um, this for me is a 4.5 out of 5. Now I am very biased because I edited this book. He's a client of mine. Um, but basically he's been playing Dungeons and Dragons for about 30 odd years. And um, 
so he's done all of the world building and built this really like comprehensive nation he's sorted out all the politics all the characterizations top notch so this is his first book basically as like a novelization of the storylines from the series i just thought it was really well done i mean it did need some editing um but you know very good book um so i've done a full video that's going to be coming out soon because this technically hasn't officially been uh, released yet but uh, i do strongly recommend picking this up if you're into fantasy and in fact if you let me know in the comments if you want to read it uh, we can sort you out a review copy as well then we have the patchwork girl of oz by l frank baum so this is the latest oz book that i've been reading as part of my buddy reads with joel swagman um yeah, this one was pretty good really all things considered i mean it does introduce a bunch of new characters but then we sort of see all the old ones as well i mean the main problem again is these right the, basically the plot line is these people get turned into stone and they have to gather these ingredients and turn them back into people and again i'm just like just ask ozma she's got the magic belt she can do anything with that magic belt just ask her it never occurs to them so um yeah but a full review of this coming soon as part of that little Buddy Reads series. And then I also read Lair by James Herbert. So this is the sequel to The Rats. Uh, I won this as part of a bunch of job lots on eBay actually. And I have Domain over there which is the third book in the series. So that's what I'm going to read next. Uh, I didn't tab this one out. To be honest there wasn't a huge amount that I wanted to say. It's kind of more of the same. There's some great gore and stuff in it. But um, it's not necessarily one where like... I don't know, it's not going to blow your mind, especially after reading Rats. I would say, I mean, it was a week four out of five. It was still pretty good. Um, but yeah, it was like necessary for me to read this one so that I can go on and read Domain. Um, so, yeah. But I didn't tab it out. Also, I had a bit of a mean comment on one of my other James Herbert books. So now I'm like, well, I don't know. The the fans or whatever seem a little bit toxic to me, so I don't, I don't want to fuck with that, you know? But yeah, there, four out of five. Yo, I'm at my childhood bedroom in my mum's house and I have a book to wrap up for you. So I read Shrine by James Herbert. This is a weird one because it takes a while for you to even realise it's a horror novel um, because it starts out being very much just like, oh, miraculous stuff's going on. This little girl is like channeling the Virgin Mary and all of this stuff and then it starts to go a bit badly wrong. Um, I don't know if I particularly like the explanation for why all this weird stuff was happening, but it was still a very good book in general. Um, and uh, yeah, like great characterization, pretty good plot, bit of action in it as well. Uh, it's a four out of five, but it's a weak four out of five for me. Um, and no review coming soon because I didn't tab it out. But um, yeah, it was good. And another James Herbert ticked off. Um, I have a few books to wrap up for you today. The first one is Fluke by James Herbert. I don't know where the book is. I'm still unpacking from my travels. So I think it's in my case somewhere. So I haven't found it yet. Um, but basically this is a book, it's like a reincarnation story, a, a guy is murdered, then he gets reincarnated, or he thinks he was murdered, that's a big spoiler, sorry, uh, and he gets reincarnated as a dog, um, and then he's kind of basically coming to terms with life as a dog and also trying to sort of solve the mystery of his own death I suppose. Um, the problem is, is I don't really like books that are narrated by animals, so it kind of annoyed me a little bit. It did remind me a bit of a cross between um, a War Horse by Michael Morpurgo and then like a bit of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Um, I gave it a week 3.5 out of 5, it was okay. It was a very fast read, so there is that, but I think it's easily the weakest of the James Herbert books that I've read. Then I read TikTok of Oz by L. Frank Baum, so I will be doing a full review of this soon. Uh, this I read uh, actually pretty much in one sitting on my journey home, and I read it as a buddy read with Joel Swagman because we're slowly but surely working our way through all the Wizard of Oz books. Um, and yeah, it was pretty good actually. I mean, TikTok obviously is a major player in it, but we get Dorothy and, you know, the usual cast of characters that we're used to from Oz. We also get Shaggy Manny, he's back with the love magnet. He's trying to rescue his brother who's been like captured by the Gnome King. So as I say, lots of like familiar characters coming out to play in this one. I gave it probably a week four out of five, but it was pretty good. Um, it just reassured me that the, that the series is still good and it does still have stuff to offer, you know? Um, and this was also an illustrated version, which was nice and probably explains why it was like 250 pages because a lot of the other ones have been like 180 pages or something like that. Um, but yeah, full review coming soon. And then I read Domain by James Herbert. So this is the third and final book in the Rat series. Um, this has a lot of stuff to like about it. I mean, it's got like nuclear strikes in it. It's got giant rats. So I should have liked it more than I did. I really enjoyed like the first hundred or so pages and then I think it just started to lose momentum a little bit. Um, I guess maybe as well in part because it's like twice as long. It's probably almost as long as the first two Rats books combined. 
Um, and so I think it kind of suffered because of that. Um, not to say it was a bad book, I gave it a 4 out of 5, it was just a kind of a weak 4 out of 5. Um, but it was still like a satisfying denouement to uh, the Rats books. Um, I don't know, I was just some, somehow hoping for a little bit more from it, but you know, I can't be too mad, it was still, it was still pretty good. Hi guys, just wanted to add this as well. So this is Once Upon a Time in Drayton Bassett by Alan Woodings. Uh, this is one of those where, I mean, I've worked on this book, so I can't really give it, um, you know, an unbiased review. It's actually written by my granddad. Um, it's his memoirs of growing up in Drayton Bassett. This is the not for resale proof copy because I'm going to be sending this over to him. Um, but yes, it's about 30 odd pages, very short, very sweet. I can't imagine anybody wanted to read it unless they either grew up in Drayton Bassett or know my granddad. But um, yeah, it was a fun little project to work on. Uh, I'll give it my standard rating for stuff like this uh, that I've worked on, which is just a 3.5 out of 5. Hello, it is me. I've just got one last book to update you on. Um, I thought I was I was very close to my uh, Goodreads goal of 365 books, one, one for each day of the year. And uh, I thought I was going to miss it, so I listened to an audiobook of A Night in Terror Tower by R.L. Stein because I thought I was going to miss it by one book. Um, and then when I added that to Goodreads, it was like, you forgot to add years to these books. Did you read those this year? And I was like, yes, I did. So when I went through that, I'm actually on 368 books. So I didn't need to reread uh, Terror Tower. But it is one of my favourite Goosebumps books. I gave it a strong 4 out of 5. Uh, the reason I wanted to reread it was because my short story for Cam Wolf's uh, collection, uh, which one was his? His was um, We're Not Home. Um, so one of the collections of you know horror tubers that have been going around um, and my story for that was based not based on but inspired by a night in terror tower and the uh, time travel element to it so um, so yeah I wanted to reread it and I'm glad to say actually upon rereading it actually my story doesn't owe too much to a night in terror tower there's just like a little nod to it um, because I wasn't sure, I felt as though maybe I'd just ripped off the story but no I haven't so it's all good, I gave that a 4 out of 5 so there we have it, that is the end of another year and the end of another reading wrap up. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.